Whence thinkest thou kings and parasites arose? Whence that unnatural line of drones who heap toil and unvanquishable penury on those who build their palaces and bring their daily bread? From vice, black loathsome vice, from rapine, madness, treachery, and wrong, from all that genders misery and makes of earth this thorny wilderness, from lust, revenge, and murder. And when reason's voice, loud as the voice of nature, shall have waked to the nations, and mankind perceive that vice is discord, war, and misery, and that virtue is peace, happiness, and harmony, when man's mature nature shall disdain the playthings of its childhood, kingly glare will lose its power to dazzle, its authority will silently pass by, the gorgeous throne shall stand unnoticed in the regal hall, fast falling to decay, whilst falsehood's trade shall be as hateful and unprofitable as that of truth is now. Where is the fame which the vain, glorious, mighty of the earth seek to eternize? Oh, the faintest sound from time's light footfall, the minutest wave that swells the flood of ages, whelms in nothing the unsubstantial bubble. I, today, stern as the tyrant's mandate, Red the gaze that flashes desolation, strong the arm that scatters multitudes. Tomorrow comes. That mandate is a thunder peal that died in ages past. That gaze a transient flash of which the midnight closed, and on that arm the worm has made his meal. The virtuous man who great in his humility, as kings are little in their grandeur, he who leads invincibly a life of resolute good and stands amid the silent dungeon depths more free and fearless than the trembling judge who, clothed in venal power, vainly strove to bind the impassive spirit. When he falls, his mind eye beams benevolence no more, withered the hand outstretched but to relieve, sunk reason's simple eloquence that rolled but to appall the guilty. Yes! The grave hath quenched that eye, and death's relentless frost withered that arm. But the unfading fame which virtue hangs upon its votary's tomb, the deathless memory of that man whom kings call to their mind and tremble, the remembrance of which the happy spirit contemplates, its well-spent pilgrimage on earth, shall never pass away. Nature rejects the monarch, not the man the subject, not the citizen. For kings and subjects, mutual foes, forever play a losing game in each other's hands, whose stakes are vice and misery. The man of virtuous soul commands not, nor obeys. Power, like a desolating pestilence, pollutes whatever it touches, and obedience, bane of all genius, virtue, freedom, truth, makes slaves of men and of the human frame a mechanized automaton. When Nero, high over flaming Rome, with savage joy, lowered like a fiend, drank with enraptured ear the shrieks of agonizing death, beheld the frightful desolation spread, and felt a new created sense within his soul thrill to the sight and vibrate to the sound. Thinkest thou his grandeur had not overcome the force of human kindness? And when Rome, with one stern blow, hurled not the tyrant down, crushed not the arm red with her dearest blood, had not the submissive abjectness destroyed nature's suggestions? Look on yonder earth. The golden harvest spring, the unfailing sun sheds light and life. The fruits, the flowers, the trees arise in due succession. All things speak peace, harmony, and love. The universe in nature's silent eloquence declares that all fulfill the works of love and joy all but the outcast man. He fabricates the sword which stabs his peace. He cherishes the snakes that gnaw his heart. He raises up the tyrant who delights in his woe, whose sport is in his agony. Yon sun lights it the great alone. Yon silver beans sleep they less sweetly on the cottage thatch than on the dome of kings. 
Is Mother Earth a stepdame to her numerous sons who earn her unshared gifts with unremitting toil? A mother only to those pulling babes who nursed in ease and luxury make men the playthings of their babyhood and mar in self-important childishness that peace which men alone appreciate? Spirit of nature, no. The pure diffusion of thy essence throbs alike in every human heart. Thou I erectest there, thy throne of power unappealable. Thou art the judge beneath whose nod man's brief and frail authority is powerless as the wind that passes idly by. Thine the tribunal which surpasses the shoe of human justice as God surpasses man. Spirit of nature, thou life of interminable multitudes, soul of whose mighty spheres, whose changeless paths through heaven's deep silence lie, soul of that smallest being, the dwelling of those whose life is one faint April sun gleam, man like these passive things, thy will unconsciously fulfilleth, like theirs his age of endless peace, which time is fast maturing, will swiftly surely come. And the unbounded frame which thou pervadest will be without a flaw, marring its perfect symmetry.